You are listening to the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. Now, in today's episode, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by our listeners. But the way we open the episode is with an introductory portion. So where we talk about current events, we talk about studies, we mention our sponsors. Today's intro portion was 36 minutes long. After that, we got into the fitness questions. Here's a rundown of today's episode. We open up by talking about a terrible, terrible movie on Netflix called Knock Knock starring Kenyu. Kenyu Reeves? No way. Yeah, terrible. Yeah. Kenyu. Uh, then Justin explains why his ear is so red. Uh, we talk about Russia making a vaccine that's 2% more effective than the one that we have here in America. That seems accurate. <laughs> They're winning. Uh, we talk about how Spotify is making more moves by purchasing companies to strengthen their hold on the podcast space. Sounds good. Yeah, go Spotify. I talk about the right dose of caffeine and why weaning caffeine down can give you better performance, which led me to talk about uh, Legion. Legion makes... A great pre-workout drink, full serving, 350 milligrams of caffeine, half a serving, 175. But it also has things like beta alanine and a, a form of choline that helps with focus and intensity and many, many other things. Legion also makes great whey protein and other supplements. All their products are naturally flavored, no artificial sweeteners whatsoever. And because you are a Mind Pump listener, you get 20% off all their products. Here's what you do. Go to buylegion.com. That's B-Y-L-E-G-I-O-N.com forward slash mind pump. And then use the code mind pump for 20% off. Then we talk about uh, Emily Harrington, first woman to free climb, uh, I think, El Capitan. That's pretty it's amazing. Pretty uh, then Justin talks about Jim Shark's hairy armpits. Hey, That sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I talk about Butcher Box and some of the incredible add-ons you could do to your current box. Uh, incredible Meats, I ordered their sausage. It was really, really good. Um, and because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a huge hookup. In fact, right now, signing up at, uh, with the Mind Pump offer, you get a free Thanksgiving turkey. Just go to butcherbox.com forward slash Mind Pump and then use the code Mind Pump. And then we got into the questions. The first question was, what's the best way to get a higher vertical jump? The second question, uh, what are some of our favorite old school lifts that nobody does anymore? The third question, is it true that calf muscles are mostly just genetics? And the final question, why do female CrossFitters uh, have thicker waists? Also, right now we're running a huge at-home bundle promotion. So these are the programs that we, do, that we offer that require little to no equipment. So you could do them at home, and they're very effective. They're very, very effective at building muscle and burning body fat. So the first program is MAPS Anywhere. Very popular. This program actually blew up when a lot of gyms closed down due to COVID. All you need to follow MAPS Anywhere are resistance bands and a broomstick. It is a full body, uh, two and a half, three month program. The next program is MAPS Suspension. Uh, this is a program that uses only suspension trainers to train your entire body. So suspension trainers you can hook over your door uh, or over a bar or around a tree. And you can do all kinds of beginner to extremely advanced exercises. And the third program that we have in this bundle is MAPS HIT. Now HIT is high intensity interval training. These are 15 to 25 minute short, super hard calorie burning workouts. So if you have a little bit of time, you want to burn a ton of calories, follow these high intensity interval training workouts that you find in MAPS HIT. So all three programs normally retail for $291. Well, here's what we're doing right now. Get all three of them for one payment of $99.99. That's it. 99 bucks, 99 cents. Get full access to all three programs. If you follow all of them, it's about six months or more of expert workout programming. Oh, by the way, if you sign up, you can follow the programs for a full month. And within that month, if you decide that this is not blowing your mind, you're not getting the great results that you were looking for, return them all for a full refund. Here is how you sign up. Go to mapsnovember.com. That's the word maps, the letter M-A-P-S, november.com. Since day one, I've been I've been uh, touting Disney, right? I've been saying them forever. Everyone's like, oh, you guys fucking Disney everything, Disney everything, love to. I think they're on to something by keeping the traditional one-time-a-week release, Oh yeah, putting a lot of energy and effort into one show, making it 
epic and you know I, you look forward to it iconic versus netflix is going the binge model mm -hmm. is keep feeding these people they're addicted to watching tv yeah. more series let's use the algorithms to figure out all we need to piece together to get them watching more like very very different business models both are successful but I have, I really do have faith in the direction that Disney is. Do you think that'll be the better one? I do, mm. because I think right now, you know, Netflix. But they only have one show. Netflix is the the processed food, bro. Mm. They, processed food outsells it all other food. It does, but I mean, just like what we're at right now, I feel like people are becoming more and more savvy. I believe we're on the front end of that in the health and fitness space, making more and more people aware of how dangerous that path is if you fill your cupboards up with nothing but processed food on it's almost inevitable you're going to become obese from that. I think the same thing is going to happen with like Netflix binging. It's uh. all fun and games right now because everybody's enjoying it. But after a while, we're gonna have a bunch of zombies that just stare at screens all day long, and we're gonna see all the <laughs> we're gonna see all the unintended consequences bro, a decade wish, from now. That's some wishful thinking, bro. <laughs> that's what I think. Really? Uh, yes, dude. I mean, other okay. If if I'm wrong, we are on our way to Wally. Yeah. yeah. If yeah. I'm wrong, we are on our way to Wally. Well, there's sure. gonna be a clear divide of Wallians and uh, you know non Wallians. <laughs> right? yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. yeah. So if that's the case, then I I don't know. I just I think that uh, Disney. Here's another thing. Disney's Disney programming is superior, but they don't put out as much. Mm -hmm. You know, so Netflix has got the throw spaghetti at the wall approach, yeah. mm -hmm. where you're gonna get something is gonna stick, and every once in a while they do put something out that's really good. Well, well a lot it of times reminds me, yeah, it reminds me of the old school, like uh, HBO was was the best one for that because it was like they had maybe three or four shows, but they were like the best shows. Right. And, and I, I feel like they just need like two or three other really, you know, massive hits. And then I, I kind of agree with your show. Have either one of you guys watched the right stuff yet? No, I haven't seen I it I cannot believe you two no, haven't watched it. No, you know what I was You got the right stuff. What you, uh, Ooh, do you not, do you not, do you not have Disney Plus? I do. Oh, you, yeah, I can't believe you haven't watched Right Stuff. No, is that the astronaut one? Yes, yeah, yeah. one hundred percent in both of, of your guys' wheelhouse. I tried to yeah. watch it and I couldn't convince Jessica. Oh, really? Yeah, because it has to do with space, so she thinks it's sci-fi. I'm like, no, it's not sci-fi. It's, it's fake. Not, just because they're in space. <laughs> it's, a, it's based on yeah. a true story. I know. Oh, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing sci-fi. I'll try again. And you know what? I already lost points last night with her anyway. Oh, you too. Oh. Yeah, I lost hella yeah, points. You guys are doing well. No, yeah. dude, because <laughs> I can. Dude. So Our dad game is off this <laughs> no, week. No. So this has happened a few times where I'll convince her to watch something, and it's terrible. It, oftentimes, it's really good, but the terrible ones, she just they, they she remembers them. I disagree with that. Well, this is what happened. I agree. I agree with Jessica. It's probably why she gets upset is because I think it's probably more terrible. No, no more terrible more often. No, it's good. Sometimes. Your 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 reviews. Are <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll give you guys. I'll you are me. not my trusted source for listen. This, this <laughs> listen, time, Linda. This time hey. you're right. So I got <laughs> I got your back on some of them. So I'm on a group text with my cousins and a, and a few friends, and they're all like, it's like, it's an investment thread, and every, but every once in a while, somebody will say something non investment related. So one of my buddies on there. At first, I, I thought it was one of you guys. So yesterday, she was asking me, "Who the hell told you to watch this stupid?" Movie and I'm like oh, I can't remember something. I bet, I bet it was Adam or Justin. <laughs> never like, no. Jessica. I would never well, give Sal a bad. Well, hold on. I'll tell you why. So, uh, so anyway, so I, I, mine I, are all good. I checked and it was actually one of my buddies in this thread, and he's like, "Dude, you guys got to watch Knock Knock on uh, on Netflix. It's like a it's like a a thriller like Fatal Attraction. You guys remember Fatal Attraction? Yeah, yeah. That was a good movie. Yeah, it was a good movie. Right? I mean, I don't remember that much, but yeah, it was iconic, right? Iconic, kind sure. of one of those like like what do they call them? Steamy thrillers. Oh, I was thinking Basic Instinct. That was yeah. the one where she cross her legs. Yeah, and you could see the. But like that, yeah, it was like something a, like that, right? Yeah, steamy right. thriller, sure. right? But steamy to, to make a steamy thriller good, it's got to have like suspense and mystery, and it's got to yeah, have a good you story. Boil it. Yeah, yeah, it can't just be you know good crotch sex. shot, right? right. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah. So, anyways, like you got to watch Knock Knock. So last night we're sitting there and. Uh, Aurelius is now starting to kind of settle. We're, we're starting to kind of get in the hang of things with the breastfeeding. So she's chilling with him on the couch. I'm like, hey, you want to watch a movie? She's like, okay. She's like, do you have any ideas? I'm like, I heard of this movie, Knock Knock, and I, I can't remember who told me, but they said it was really good. So I go on Netflix, and sure enough, it's ranked number seven on mm. their top like rankings, right? Yeah, I just, I just can't picture you not going for the who's there. Dad joke. <laughs> no, I just can't. I've, I've, been, I've said it like four times. Yeah. You, you, I knew yeah. it. Yeah. 
So anyway, um, I go on Netflix and it's number seven. You know how they do the rankings? Yeah, and by the way, those things I've now yes. thrown those out. Waste. It's a bunch of kids skew that. It's at. stupid. Yeah, it's a bunch stupid. of binge eaters fucking so, throw that so throw I, that numbers off. So I put it on and it's Keanu Reeves, right? Keanu Reeves is in it. So oh, I'm like, dude, I love Keanu. Oh, stop. come on, you guys. He's a surfer in every movie. Bro. Bro. I know, but it, dude, you just love him. I though. bet you he's a surfer in this movie. He's the worst actor of all time. <laughs> <laughs> he's one character. I know. He is. He's I a know. surfer. No, no, he's, he's, two he's reliable. He's either yeah. he's either Bill and Ted or he's Neo from the Matrix. Both that's of, it. Hey, I, in my okay, first does, of all, he does a lot of Neo says hardly anything exactly. And Bill and Ted is surfer. Yes, oh, it's uh, still surfer. John like Wick, stoner surfer. He does oh. good with John Wick too, that's but it's kinda, the same character. That's Matrix. Yeah, same character, yeah. right? So, and you're right. He's terrible, terrible actor. Anyway, so the the premise is <laughs> you guys are crazy. He's this him. father, you know, married. He's got this this wife and two kids. He seems like a good dad. That's how it opens. I'm don't worry. I'm gonna ruin it for you because you don't have to watch it. It's shit, it's pure well, shit. Can you? I mean, yeah. I don't know. I'm, <laughs> how do you say I, 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 might, I might do it. Wait, how do you say his name? Can you? Can you? Can, can you? So anyway, he- What is that from? I don't know. Oh. What, what are you, was it supposed to be from something? Yeah, Justin just says it properly. I just say proper. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. So anyway, yeah. he's at, he's with his family, and then it's Father's Day, and then the wife and kids go to the beach because he has to work. So he's at home by himself. And, you know, he's drinking a little wine. He's doing work. He's about to light up a bowl, mm. smoke some weed or whatever. Doorbell, right. you know, rings or whatever. He goes over and it's these two, like, 21-year-old, you know, girls. And they're all soaking wet. And they're like, oh, my phone doesn't work. Can we come inside? And, you know, we, we, you know, we need to make a phone call. Such whatever. a great premise. I'm anyway. So he invites. Him, so he invites yeah. him in. Yeah. Real life situation. And so he invites. And Jessica right away calls it. She's like, "You just, you just want to see naked chicks." I'm like, "No, I don't, babe. That's not why. <laughs> that's not why I'm watching this." She's like, "Yeah, right, dude. Let's cool. see how this plays out." I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> "So like, I'm like, don't it's, ruin the plot." I'm like, Supp <laughs> "Supposedly it's a thriller." I'm like, "So who knows what's gonna happen?" Well, sure enough, they seduce him, and he he bangs them both. Right, wow. he has sex with. Them. Anyway, they turn out to be these right, crazy yeah, chicks yeah. that don't leave his house, and then they try to kill him, and it's this whole crazy... And 30 minutes into the movie, Jessica's like, I've given this a chance. It's 30 minutes long. We've seen it 30 minutes. She's like, this is shit. Yeah. I'm like, no, but it got recommended. I said, I bet there's a crazy twist. I bet it's going to get good. It didn't. It was uh, fucking garbage there's nothing, the whole time. There's nothing worse than a, a recommendation uh, from somebody, and then you're in it like halfway or quarter way through. You know it's bad, but you're sticking around because you're like, okay, he said it was good. I was it, committed. It's got to be a twist. I was invested. And then you get to the end of it, and there's no twist. I was invested. You know, you're invested, and you're like, and plus, I want to prove her wrong, so I'm, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to change. It's going to get good. I just know it. It was the worst movie I've ever seen in my entire life. It yeah. Was, it was... I, mean, I kind of felt that way about Tenant, and I know there'll be some people that'll battle me on that, probably, because it because people like new, unique, you know, concepts, you know, something that they haven't seen before or whatever, but the, the acting in it was so painful, and like the uh, the dialogue between everybody, it was just like, I wanted to walk out of, of the movie, and it was just like, dude, uh, at that moment, you really have to be like, okay, this is so incredibly awful that I'm just going to walk out and like... Like, you know, release all the money. I oh, for this. dude, I was, I, I'm, I'll never get that 90 minutes back in my life. And I, I even, I went to bed angry. I woke up this morning even angry. It's like, gosh, damn it. That was so yeah, dumb. Yeah. Cause it just like ate a huge it was, chunk of, of your time. It was gratuitously uh, weird and disturbing. And of course, lots of TNA. Now I know why my buddy thought it was a great movie. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, brother. Man. That's why you thought it was going to be so terrible. Keanu Reeves is the worst actor of all time in it. The wow. worst. Yeah. Knock, knock. Who's yeah, you know, there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Girls. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a father. Come yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> you look wet. <laughs> <laughs> it was so... Let's, and, and I was like, pizza. Dude, I was uncomfortable watching it because, you know, he's like this married man father. Yeah, yeah. And these girls are obviously... And you're watching out. it with your wife. Yeah, and I'm sitting there <laughs> and I'm... Those are all terrible ones. I'm just watch. getting uncomfortable, you know what I mean? I'm like, dude, this is... <laughs> This is not. I'm yeah. like. For, Sounds like I would never let them in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. Well, first of all, if you're a smart man, you wouldn't because that yeah. would never happen in real life. You're like, <laughs> yeah. all right. Yeah. Something's. Yeah, where's the cameras? Exactly. I'm getting <laughs> set up here. Yeah. This is not real. <laughs> Middle of the night, two chicks show up. Want to yeah. take a bath? Oh this man. Is not, yeah. Oh shit. Anyway, dude. I was just showering all night, yeah. dude. That's what I was doing. Yeah. What happened? To you? Why was your ear so red? It's when still, I you see it? Look it's at it, still, dude. It's still red. Why is your ear red? <laughs> yeah. So I like yesterday I was shooting again with Eli, and we were doing another commercial and, and uh, I had like the makeup on still. Dude, that stuff is so hard to get off your skin. Makeup? 
Yeah. Why are you wearing makeup? Oh, oh look shit. at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my so, God. I got a new character I'm developing here, so we'll see how he does. Is it a samurai devil? Y- yeah, it's something. It, it, we call him Satonio. That's uh, <laughs> that's his name, and uh, you guys will see it you know, down the road. Oh, my God. So, that's that's one pick. I think I did one more there. Were you here, like, Doug, when he was doing all this? Yes, I was. Oh, you yeah, were here. Yeah. So Doug, you, Doug got to see it first. You got to see a little bit of it. I tell you, you hit a home run with the Magic Spoon one. Oh, so, that was oh, so good. Thanks. So weird. I'm so in, I'm so curious. Maybe somebody who's a listener. Hey, Justin. Hey, Doug. What do you got going on here? Oh, enjoying some Magic Spoon? Magic Spoon. I love Magic Spoon. Can I have some? Hey, be my guest. All right. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, blueberry's my favorite. Blueberry's my favorite, too. Mm. Yeah. Mm, it's so good. Dude, isn't this the best? Oh, man. Uh. Mm. <laughs> isn't this the yeah. best? Oh, Justin! Man. Hey, Doug! These are so, 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 so good. Yeah. Justin! Hey, Doug! Friends. So, so good. <laughs> hey, Justin! Yeah. Hey, Doug! Mm. Friends. Magic spoon. Can I have some? Magic spoon. Yes! Magic spoon. It's better with friends. is uh, more savvy than we are on Instagram because for some weird reason that did not get viewed a ton. So we have, you know, boring ass videos of us talking on our Mind Pump Media page. It'll get 7,000 yeah. views. But yeah, plus. 5, yeah, Easy. More, more than that. And this one gets 3,000. Meanwhile, every- Real com- disappointed you guys. Yeah. Well, I don't know what, why that was. It feels like, like, I think your theory it, was right. Yeah. M- might be right because it's an ad and we didn't say it was an ad. Maybe their algorithm or someone flagged I, it. I actually think because it was on Saturday. So Saturday was like big political news and everything. And I think like by Biden was announced, you know, like the elect. And so like the, the entire feed was just all pol- politics and, and all that stuff was like, you know, riddled through everybody's feed. So I don't even think anybody saw it. Huh. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. See, that might be right. I, that's probably more likely because I haven't heard anything about like the ad thing. If you haven't, if you're listening, you haven't seen it, go to the Mind Pump uh, media Instagram page. It's fire. It's yeah. so good. Sweet. Yeah, so let this, me know. So this makeup was just stick to your face? Yeah, well, I mean, you paint it. Like, I was painting my body. There's like, you know, the, the one that you paint your body with, it was actually turning me pink because I'm so white. You know? <laughs> it's supposed to be red. And so I had to be thrifty with the, the face uh, one to use for my arms. And anyways, yeah, it was, that was the first time I actually like was like, you know what? I'm going all in. You know, like, I'm going to change my entire look, all this stuff, and we'll see how this goes. And it's just soap and water? It, yeah, soap and water. But then I had to. I was like scrubbing everything, dude. Like, and it, I that was the first time I used our shower here too. By the way. Oh, this is this running? Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. So that's working. But I didn't have a towel. You know, I didn't have any soap. I grabbed the soap from the uh, the bathroom. Yeah. And I was just scrubbing myself. Oh, the, yeah. the hand soap. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. So we yeah, used we to have... clean everything anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's an upgrade from. I'm dawn. even more like you know, <laughs> you dried out. My skin's all even more flaky now. So. Yeah, it's better from the Tide Pods you use sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's, it's a bit of an upgrade. Oh, cleans your clothes, might as well. Oh, yeah. Clean your stuff anyway. Dude, so um, news came out of Russia about their vaccine. So you know how our news comes out that says that- oh. it's, like, it's like the space race. No, Did, oh, hold on. It's like the space wait, wait, race. Hold on a second. Okay, space their race whole population has been, uh, has been using this. I don't correct? know. I don't, no? I don't know. But anyway, a lot of them anyway? They, they, it's been out, right? So here's this is what's funny. So our news comes out, Pfizer and I don't remember what other pharma company- trial comes out 90% effective. Like that's insane, right? Like, yeah. Anything over 60, 70% would have been a home run. Russia comes out 91%. 92%. No, no, no I called <laughs> yeah, it. 92. Of course. You Ru- got us on two, two percent. Yeah, Russia comes out. It's like uh, our, va- our vaccine, 92% effective. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Just, you yeah. are weak it's the with funniest. your vaccine. Yeah, I got I to gotta read it. I did it. not know that. That's yeah, funny. Yeah, it's it's they crack me up. Anyway. So is it, I mean, is it going to be available? Is it going to be available soon or what's the, because I've heard, I've heard mixed, mixed things here. I've heard that it's going to still going to be, we're a, a ways away. And we're a little ways away. We are. Yeah, it should be by the end of the year. It should be okay. So, you know, yeah. Russia named its, uh, its vaccine, by the way. You said space race, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sputnik. Sp- oh wow! <laughs> did not. Sputnik five COVID nineteen vaccine. Wow. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. It's so, like our Patriot missile. So is yeah. this is this yeah. going to be like a, a race against? Totally. COVID? 
totally. to see which country does better. Even more reason why you guys should write, uh, watch right stuff because it's all about all that uh, good stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The Apollo vaccine. You know, the, the CEO of Pfizer uh, dumped 62% of his stock um, right on the COVID vaccine announcement. So he dumped it at a nearly why, why, fifty-two week high why, why because it, oh, it was a high. Yeah, oh. so it was a five uh, yeah. five point six million dollars. But you got to be careful when you do that because you have you know what is it, insider information, and mm. so you got to be you got to be careful when you do that. So I'm wondering if he's going to get looked at or whatever. Yeah. I, I, did you see Bill Gates's awkward interview about his vaccine efforts? What? No. no. Oh yeah, you guys should should. I'm not even going to go into it, but it's it's worth a, a look. It's worth a little YouTube uh, search. Bill Gates has been hammered with conspiracy yeah. theories. Oh well, it, the thing is, they were hammering him about like the side effects and all these types of things, and like you know potential like maybe there were some deaths, uh, you know, involved in the testing of it and all this, and he just was so aloof about it. It was really? pretty pretty scary. Yeah, he's he's been the target of huge conspiracy theories. Did you yeah, guys did you guys hear what happened to Trump with the whole four seasons thing? No. Oh, Doug, pull this up. So my buddy my buddy sent this over to me. This happened to Trump just the other day. So I guess after after the election, they had this like you know post rally thing all set up, and it was supposed to be at the Four Seasons. And somebody who booked it for him made a mistake and did the Four Seasons landscaping. <laughs> And so they had this whole thing all set up, and it ended up being like this like landscaping business outside. I can't believe you guys didn't hear anything. No. no way. Yeah, yeah. Pull it up. So do uh, Trump la- Four Seasons landscaping and see. Tell me what you pull up right here, Doug. Yeah, my buddy sent this over to me, and I was so. Died. What's he doing? A big rally? Yeah, yeah, it was. Like, yeah, it was supposed to be the Four Seasons. Look, uh, see, 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 like piles of grass. Did you find and, it, Doug? And rocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trump's uh, legal like, team failed Four Seasons press conference. Like a warehouse. Club. Yeah, look at it. Wow. And they were already committed. It was, but already- he still did it. I mean, that's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, dude, I guess there was like an adult video shop right next to it, right to the left of it, right there oh too. My like, God. <laughs> well, he still did it. Yeah. Good for him. What? Yeah. Oh, you know, hey, hey that video That's you s- who was that golfer that you sent? Oh that, yeah. Did you see that, Justin? Yeah, yeah. at yeah. the Masters, he We're, skipped it off the water and yeah. made a hole in one. Yeah, I don't think it was they 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 put a hole in one, but it obviously wasn't a hole in one because he wasn't hitting from the right. tee. It was yeah. right in front of the water, but still, I mean, it doesn't matter. Like he was, sunk the 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 shot. Right, right. But yeah, I mean, he healed it, so it wasn't like. There's no way he intentionally did you that. You think it was an accident? There's no way that was an accident. Well, he's aiming for the Dude, hole. Dude, he, he hit it like with the heel of the club. You're supposed to get under it, right, to give it loft, and it went like like a laser beam across the, the water and like made its way over. Oh, I just, I, I can't imagine that he planned that. Oh, I come on. You're a pro, dude. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't they're think another you, level, but still, really? That's yeah. the, the trick shooting I mean, has maybe gone to another level, I guess. Well, I just think that, do you make that big of a mistake where you, you miss? I mean, for for a golfer to miss the they're ball humans, by, I mean. by that much on the club, is that doesn't, at a pro, pro level? Well, I mean, look, you're aiming for the hole, sure. obviously. So how can it be an accident? Well, because, because like what because Justin's of saying. the way that he hit it was not like he, the way the club's designed is it has an angle so it gives the ball lift mm. right and he didn't give it any lift and and beginners oh, a lot of times to... they hit it with the, the the heel of the club and it just uh, it, it goes like straight like he was trying to hit it over the water yes but instead he hit it across the yeah water. exactly uh, yeah okay. that's Justin's point but I I don't think so. I mean, I feel like that. I mean, you're at that level. I feel like you're. That's it would be so weird to see that. Well, and I can see that because, the, like, I've watched. I've been to like a pro uh, event, and and I've I've seen the spin that they can put on balls. It's it's amazing. Like, so they'll shoot it way past you. Like, oh my god, it's a terrible shot! And then it has all this backspin, and it goes like right up next to it. Yeah, you know the what blows me away the most. You guys ever watch? Um, uh, of course you don't. Uh, guys who kick soccer balls and are able to get it to spin oh, no, and curve. I'm and- already bored. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, corner That's kicks. That's crazy. Did you? Yeah. That, that was the one that was viral on. Uh, I don't know if it was Barstool or who yeah, or Score yeah. who put it up last. The, the guy who did the no look corner kick. Dude, he was looking the other way, what? kicked the corner, and, and, and just spins hooked, hooked and, it in. and hooks in. Yeah, yeah nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Full story. Yeah. What was that? What was, I'm just kidding. What was that? I'm just joking. Soccer people. Oh, yeah, what dude. was that one video where the guy he like what did he do to the other guy? Made him fall down, and you're like, oh, this is why nobody likes soccer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, how did he make it? Yeah, so uh, no. He 
you got stretcher. Yeah, you got, you got like a little a little shoulder and elbow, and then they had him stretchered off. It was oh, like so. No. Yeah, it was the most overacted thing ever. Yeah, he, he gets pulled away on a gurney because he's just like, uh, oh, oh, he hit me. He bumped into me. Ooh. Yeah. We better backpedal. We're gonna offend all the. It's all right, but you know what I do want? Soccer fans. Now here's a cool. Here's an interesting thing. I want to know what kind of spray they use. You ever seen them? Oh, my knee, and then they, they're they're fine. You ever no? seen that in soccer? No. Oh yeah, there's like this spray that they do, and it makes all this like I don't know if it's cold spray or something. What? Yeah, so they're like, ah, he uh, broke my leg, and then they, and the, the guy gets aerosol, up. Aerosol, like, cortisol. He's like, I'm cool now. What? Yeah, he doesn't watch because he no. doesn't watch soccer. No, yeah, mm-hmm. I didn't know that. That's yeah, that's too bad. Did you guys see uh, Spotify acquiring another company? Yeah. Oh, they, oh yeah. The uh, the ad. Yeah. Company, yeah. Right? Yeah. Another one. They're making a Megaphone? lot of moves. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that was another company. It's just basically uh, a software that it helps uh, podcast users with advertising. So it's like, how does it help? Well, because you know, I think I've told this to you guys before. One of the options that we have uh, with our advertising, we don't do this right now. So one of the the perks of advertising with us is it's evergreen for the company. So if a partner. Uh, pays for a commercial, um, even though a year later, like so, an episode we did last year is still getting downloads. It's still too. got your commercial on it. Yeah, it's still mm-hmm. got your commercial, still getting downloads. Well, the, uh, a lo- the future, or what a lot of people do, podcasts that are even bigger than us do, is they sell, uh, you know, only so many uh, like listens. So, oh, I see. for example, so like one of our partners, like t- you know, today Legion is a commercial. So Legion would buy this commercial. We they would once it hits a hundred thousand listens, they it, the commercial drops off. That's it. You got your hundred thousand listens from us. If I if that show ended up being an amazing show and goes on to do one fifty two hundred thousand, we have the opportunity to resell that slot. I mm. see. And so that software that allows you to do this, and then it also I think it has some sort of an algorithm to help uh, brands get partnered with the right listenership. So mm. like you're not messing around with brands that aren't going to probably perform as well. Mm. So it's 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 interesting software. I mean, we obviously we've built a different a, a whole different model here on how we do things, and I wouldn't change what we're doing. But it's interesting to me that just watching Spotify double and triple down yeah. on the podcast. No, that's exciting. I mean, that they're putting all the effort into podcasting. I mean, we need we need a big company like that to really like push it through mm-hmm. into mainstream. Well, speaking of Legion, I am remember how I told you guys about a month ago I was gonna start weaning down caffeine and cycling it, just preparing for now when now I'm not getting much sleep. Or right, right. I'm so glad I did. I yeah. swear to God, it makes such a huge difference. <laughs> the right dose of caffeine, and the reason why I brought up Legion is his uh, their pulse pre-workout, one full serving is 350 milligrams of caffeine. It's, a, de- a, it's, a, it's a decent dose of caffeine. Mm, that's a lot. And I was at the point where uh, 350 would have been my dose, but it's a little too high for me. And, I, and, the, and the way I know this is... When I'm working out uh, a body part like legs, which requires more stamina, right? Legs, much harder to do than chest or shoulders or whatever. If I have too much caffeine, I find myself getting out of breath. Like I don't have the same stamina. Oh, mm-hmm. interesting. So I slowly started weaning it down. Now I'm at half a dose. So what is that? 175 milligrams mm-hmm. of caffeine. And my stamina is great. And it's the right, um, for me at least, it's the right amount of caffeine. And the way that I do this is... I'll reduce my caffeine intake by a quarter every week till I'm down to a really low amount. And then I'll stay there for a little while and then start to ramp it up. And then I'll make sure to take off one or two days a week. If I go every single day, that's when shit gets too much. That's mm-hmm. when I start taking too much damn caffeine and it's, it's just not good. And then speaking of which, uh, great natural post-workout drink that uh, one warning, it, uh, you could it's it, it, because it's raw eggs, you got to be careful. But great post-workout drink you could do. Um, I've been doing this just as I'm in a hurry, trying to get to work on time. Eggnog? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's the one where he's no, I'm sorry. I'm just thinking. Holiday, <laughs> holiday guy. Yeah, yeah. Raw, raw eggs. <laughs> Eggnog. No, I do uh, egg yolks and uh, coconut water. So coconut water's got really? your- Really? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It tastes good. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. That's a lot of I, calories, yeah. Uh, so the, the egg yolks give you your protein, your choline, your cholesterol, which is excellent for recovery. Excellent for recovery. So sounds I'll do, terrible. I'll do eight egg yolks, and I'll do it in coconut water, and I'll do it in a shaker cup. And the coconut water's got the natural sugar, the mm-hmm. potassium. You got the, the proteins and the choline and the cholesterol from the egg yolks. 
Really, really easy. Uh, again, you have to be careful though because raw eggs, you're always a risk of things like salmonella right. or whatever. I hate it. And it tastes okay. Tastes good. Sounds horrible. No, no. It tastes, but then <laughs> oh. again, I forget. You're a baby. Yeah, yeah I thought it, it was cooking at milk. You did cooking at water. Cooking at water. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah I forgot you guys are both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's I don't what like I'm the taste. That just yeah. sounds like you're drinking raw eggs. Like eat yeah. raw eggs. I mean, coconut water doesn't have much flavor. No. Yeah, it's, it's, it gives you sweetness. <clears throat> like what, like a little bit? Yeah, it gives it enough. It's good. Yeah. It's not bad, dude. I don't know. Your recommendation on food is similar to your Netflix recommendation. Well, let's, yeah, like, let's see how many people do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I thought it was pretty good. Only the radical Sal fans. Yeah. Yeah. Say, oh, it's so good. Yeah. Sal Stradamos. I have it right here in my shirt. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> He's my hero. Hey, speaking of athletes, did you guys see that woman, uh, Emily Harrington? First woman to free climb. No. Uh, there was oh, a yeah. route on, um, what is it? El Capitan? Uh, El Capitan. Yes. Yeah. Free climbed it in yeah, a day in 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. First is that, woman. Now is that did that beat Alex's record or is that no the, no, no 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 no? There's a big difference. Oh, okay. there's free climbing yeah, that's and what, there's free solo. Mm-hmm. Oh, what's mm-hmm. the difference between free climbing and free solo? Free climbing, you're going up and you're attaching your you have, uh, rope still your ropes to you know uh, to, anchor points to anchor points. So if you fall, you don't die. Got it. Free solo. Yeah, none of that. Not a yeah, damn thing. Oh, I, I thought that was all underneath free free solo. No, free climb is not the same as free solo. Oh, interesting. Yeah, free solo, you are legitimately crazy. Uh, mm. Free climb, <laughs> yes. you're just you're you're crazy ish. You're still crazy. Yeah, but she did a route on there. I don't remember the name of the route, but the first woman to do it because there's different routes. Some are easier than others. Yeah. And she did uh, a particular route that was hard. So first woman to do it in, in do you, Yeah, congratulations. Hours. That's awesome. That's do you, so awesome. Do you remember what the what the what they described what the doctors described on that on that documentary with Alex of like what was going on with his frontal lobe? Do you remember that? that I don't stuff? know if it was frontal lobe, but there was something with his brain where he he kind of doesn't get much Enough joy or, or fear yeah. out of things unless it's super yeah i was trying to explain this to my brother my brother-in-law i think is the same way my brother-in-law i told oh, you i know what you're talking about yeah, my yeah. brother-in-law broke his hip okay uh right down he does downhill extreme mountain biking right and he's mid 40s and uh he's uh, everything he's uh, he's always like interested in something that is risky and and like that this dude okay was literally still using a crutches and got back to downhill uh, riding. Doctor did not clear him yet. Okay, he's only supposed to put twenty pounds of pressure and and weight. Well, How's he out. riding down? Well, because you don't put a lot of a lot of weight and pressure on that. You're on a bicycle, so it's sitting on his ass. It's oh. not standing up. So he he's not okay. He's not even allowed to walk. Okay, yet this motherfucker's going downhill again. Yeah, I told him he's missing that frontal lobe. Yeah. It's like I wasn't sure what I feel it was. Like a lot of these extreme oh, it's not frontal sports lobe, people are like this. Yeah, he scored fairly high on conscientious scale. Uh, doesn't <clears throat> say right there. He appeared to be twice as sensation seeking as the average person. So, yeah, you know. So here's the deal with it, right? So people, most people have a normal reaction to fear and excitement and you know, kind of extreme emotions. Right. People who do this crazy shit, like those people that do this, the squirrel suits. Yeah. Okay. By the way, did you guys know that there was a documentary? It's like eight out of ten people die. Oh, everybody. Yeah. Everybody yeah. dies. There was yeah. this documentary that was done on the squirrel suit. I watched that one. Yeah, By too. the end of it, they're like, yeah, know, th- forty of these guys died. <laughs> yeah. No, I saw that. That's it's crazy. crazy. Yeah. So what happens is they don't feel extreme feelings, and so the only way they make themselves feel like they're alive is by doing crazy, ridiculous shit. Remember at the end of Free Solo when he finally mm. made it to the top? Yeah. If I did something like that, I would have done back back flips. I would have cried. I would have been. Ah. Yeah. He's like, that was that was nice. He's like, okay, I did that. Yeah, that was cool. Great. Yeah. Yeah. What's next? I feel like that's all. It's a little bit of torture, don't you think? What do you mean? Being like that. I mean, it's, oh, what, it's awesome because you do these crazy feats. Life and must be depressing. Like you're right. so driven for like crazy, crazy things. Yeah, if you're if you're not pushing the limits and almost killing yourself, it's not really that interesting. You probably life would probably feel like mute. Yeah. yeah, like like it's on mute. Right. Imagine like you, that. you can't just sit there and, and play cards. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. It'd be yeah, like you're gonna d- go crazy. Almost depressing. Yeah. yeah. Right. Anyway, Adam, uh, I, you were saying earlier that you did you messed up with with uh, with your with your girl. Oh God. I want to yeah. hear the story. Oh, way to go. Way to bring yeah. That one. Well, it was Sal. I thought about it, but yeah, I'm not right the only up. one that yeah. messed up last night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Duh, fucking. I'm in the doghouse right now. Well, I've just. I. Uh, yeah. This is a 
pure, I have no excuse. I just purely fucked up. It was a bad, you know, late at night thinking I'm being funny and stuff like that, giving her like a playful jab because she's turning 40 and that was not a good oh, idea. Yeah. What did you say? Yeah. Well, just because it's, it's been 10 years we've been there. I'm like, oh my God, it's been 10 years we've been there. I remember when you were young and hot and all this. Oh stuff. my <laughs> yeah, God, yeah. bro. Yeah. Just fucking not a good idea. What, why, what Classic you, Adam. I was just trying, you know. What kind of a playful jab is Well, you know, <laughs> not all the time. We're, hey, babe. Yeah. Some land, some don't. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> some the of party, them. <laughs> Uh, maybe the part of your brain that yeah, this yeah. process is appropriate or not yeah, appropriate. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. I think we push boundaries so much that sometimes we think something that like that's really funny. And then, you know, when it came out, I knew it wasn't very funny. I was like, oh, fuck. That didn't land the way I thought it was going to yeah. yeah. So so she pissed at you? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm in trouble right now for sure. She's just, <laughs> and I'm like, and there's like no backpedal to that either. She's like, what part of that do you think is funny? You know? <laughs> like, uh, none. Uh, I was talking to myself. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, no. Well, she's definitely the, I mean, she looks phenomenal. Yeah. She's, the, oh, she's yeah. The, definitely the better looking of the, of the, yeah, of the half. Yeah. I mean, no, no. I mean, no no offense to you, but she looks, I mean, she looks No, incredible. no. People still think she's in her 20s. So, I mean, come yeah. on. So, I, I maybe that's what it is because she gets, uh, and maybe it's my own insecurities, right? She gets fucking told she looks 20 all the time. I don't ever get that. Oh, I see. Uh, so, you right. wanted her to feel bad. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Subconsciously, maybe. I don't know. I was trying to, not only was I trying to explain myself, I was trying to figure it out myself. And I was looking in the mirror. <laughs> It's like, fuck, man. Yeah. Hey, babe, you're old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like a boy. Oh, listen, I know. You know, all the party favors over the hill. 80% yeah. of the time, I'd like to think that we are we're good, right? We're good. We do the we do the right thing. We're good men. We're good dads. We're good also that. Well, you know, sometimes we don't always you know, do so well. So I, I do so yeah. well. Yeah. Hey, there's, you know what? We're such a youth-obsessed uh, society. It's crazy to me because I wouldn't trade my youth for what I am now at all. I, the, the, the wisdom, the confidence- and you know, women, women when they're older, they're they're more. In my opinion, they become more attractive because of the confidence, yeah. the self awareness. Um, it's just a whole different. It's a different ballgame. As long game. as they shave their armpits. Yeah. Why? What? what? Uh, Jim Shark. You guys didn't see these. Oh no. yeah. Oh, that I was like I had to bring it great up. Great transition Thank you. right there. Thank that you. was good transition. Yeah. Wait, what happened? <laughs> yeah. So I I was perusing, uh, you know, on my Instagrams. And I saw uh, it's Gymshark girls or ladies or whatever. And there was. A, the, <laughs> I like how you make it sound like you got there on accident. Yeah, like weird. I was just, yeah, yeah, I was looking, I was just, at, fitness. looking at fitnessy, stretchy clothes, right? Um, <laughs> Because you're okay, in the already in, I'm now I'm in the doghouse. Yeah. Here, we <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, so it, it was like this lady, and you know, it, it was just interesting to me. This is all I'm going to say. Uh, it, it was like, like purposely the arms were up like this. And it was like, you know, very unshaven, uh, you know, flowy uh, uh, hair situation. Oh, so they're just showing off the armpit hair. Yeah, like very much like, hey, they're yeah, just, here it is. We're doing this. It's interesting to watch. I'm very curious to see how this goes. Like, I mean, they're, they're, they're going hard in the body positivity direction. Yeah. Um, and so it's interesting. It'll be see how far they go with that, you know? Well, yeah. I tell you, um, you know, my there's, dad- There's a wide open space for that. Think about this, okay? Here's where here's where I'm going to give them credit, right? I think it's weird too, Justin, but I, uh, to give them credit, and if you look at the athleisure wear market, okay, look at all the brands, even like brands like Viore that we work with and like the Lululemons, things like that, and they are very old school marketing, like, you know, sexy and the models are very good looking and fit and lean. And the truth is, a lot when we look at the gym, we've talked about this. I used to stand members up when, and say, "Listen, how many of these crazy bodies do you see? Look at the gym. Yeah, yeah. everybody looks very average, normal people inside here working out. So yeah, sure. how many? But how many hairy armpits? Did you yeah, see in the gym? well, that, that's my only thing. Like, like different bodies. That's that's another subject. Like, well, like, I mean, the hairy armpits. Is like, but here's that's the thing. A move. Here's the thing, though. There's got to be in America. Let's. Uh, I mean, maybe Doug can pull these stats up. Uh, there's got to be at least a million people that are that are girls that like to have hairy armpits and none. No, nobody is selling athleisure wear to them. Mm. Oh, so think athleisure of athleisure wear designed for hairy arms. Yeah, no, I mean, so it, I mean, let to, it flow. In in their defense, okay, <laughs> from a business standpoint, uh, it's a very interesting strategy to see if it's going to hold. I mean, would you have got? Let's be honest, okay, and I, I think we actually railed on them uh, five years ago. Uh, Planet Fitness. Would you have thought Planet Fitness is where it's at today? Mm. Because they went after the opposite market. I, I, I would have guessed that. For really? Sure. Yeah. You're because liar. no, I. <laughs> they was. Uh, they, <laughs> I, I pretty much know these things. Yeah, yeah I know. I Get out of here. I think there's a, episode seventy-five. I think yeah. you go back and hear Sal not I, agree with that. I predicted it. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> 
I mean, we, we you, I came up with the name. The, uh, Planet Fitness is clearly going after the market of people that don't show up to the gym. That's true. That's yeah. the reason why you can sell it for ten dollars. Well, well, remember, the curves. You, curves did the same thing. Right. Curves because the fitness. Space, and then I think that's what we speculated. Yeah, it was an unaddressed market, but I just, I guess, I just see that as a really small market. I don't know. Maybe I'm alone here. Well, yeah. the, the fitness space does a good job of trading uh, members and trading people. So what I mean by that is. They'll penetrate the market so much, and nobody will penetrate it more. They just end up fighting over that same uh, percentage. And companies like Curves uh, early on and then Planet Fitness reached people that were not part of that traditional percentage, and that was very, very smart uh, strategy on yeah. their part. But as far as the hairy armpits are, c are concerned, you know, my parents' generation – and maybe even younger than that, in Italy, no women shaved their armpits. That was a thing. Yeah. I mean, my aunts, I remember going there when I was 12. All my aunts were- Yeah, I mean, I just think that there's no athletes or company that's doing that. Yeah. You know what? It does scream, though, that like a 23-year-old's running the company. Doug, could you look up, tell it, me- It really does. How old is the CEO or owner of Gymshark? I think he I think he or she is really young. Yeah. I don't know. I What's, don't know. Now, what are you guys' thoughts on, on hairy armpits uh, on girls? Is that well, a, is obviously, that a fan I'm not a fan. Really? No. no. It doesn't bother they, me too much. Okay, yeah, I can see that. I can it's... definitely see that. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yes. Why can you see that? Because you were the guy that was like the, the non-deodorant guy for a while, no, too. No, no, no. It's, you, so you know you why? You lean a little hippie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you were by far the little most hippie bit. out of all of us. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably the least. Yeah. 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 Look, you I drink I, mushrooms on a regular basis. All, I'm trying, fucking weird all I'm trying to say is that, you know, if someone's healthy, if, if fit, and attractive, Hair or no hair, they're still attractive. Look at the the founder, twenty eight years, years old. Yeah, explains yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah. It does. Yeah. yeah. It so are pubes yeah. going to come back in style then? Sure. What do you think? They, of course. Yeah, that's yeah, different. Big old bush. What? It's coming. <laughs> Why is that different? Bush twenty twenty. That's just different. Hairy armpits are different, dude. I don't know. There's like having hairy armpits makes it stink more too. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why they're there. That's my opinion. Yeah. You guys know that, right? That's why we grow hair in our pubic area and in our armpits to emanate. It's to collect pheromones. Yeah. Throw it out there. No, yeah. it's for reals. <laughs> yeah. Pheromones make up, they play a big role in our attraction uh, to other people. They've done studies on this where they'll have women smell t shirts and men smell clothes. And Justin, you know that story you told, but you were smelling yeah. your girlfriend hey. back in the day. I mean, what? Let's not talk about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> it's an old episode, ladies and gentlemen. I don't, you yeah. find it yourself. I don't I even know, remember, I'm that. To remember that. I don't even remember that. <laughs> yeah. Where did you go on that one? Maybe you didn't tell it on the show. <laughs> I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, so that's why the hair's there. Yeah. So it's not that. I'm not, not, not I was a, a lot younger back then. But I'm not, I, I mean, I'm also not anti it. Whatever. If you want to have hairy armpits and there's a there's obviously a, a group of men like yourself that would t just totally be game for it. It's, so. it's not a fetish. I'm just saying I'm now, not that big of a deal. Okay, now you're defending it so much. I feel like, did did you, did Jessica try this for a little while? Or she doesn't she grow hair, dude. Oh, wow. No, oh, she's weird. like a dolphin. She has no, she grows no hair on her body. She could not shave her legs. I wouldn't know the difference. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I call her the hairless wonder. Wow. Yeah. Really that's, 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 that's amazing. The, the, dol the dolphin analogy is great right now. Yeah, just, I know, I know. just smooth. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah like a porpoise. No kidding. Wow. I swear. That's wild. Yeah. I'm just imagining the noises at night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have not imagined. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so smooth. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I mean, I remember I'm, I'm from in my culture, like the women, like my, you know, I hate to. Call what do you mean you're, you weren't? You didn't grow up in Italy? Yeah. No, but d genetics are strong, dude. My sister, my poor sister, bro, their hair, the arm hairs were like worse than mine. Yeah, you but they I mean? didn't grow. Yeah, they didn't, did they like grow their Eastern armpits? Europe too, right? No, they had to shave. My sister shaves her arms and everything because she was. Uh, yeah, see, hmm. so yeah. I don't know. You're, you're acting like you grew up around hey, it or something. Each their own. Yeah, yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. hey, have you guys tried the butcher box? Uh, wow, <laughs> awful <laughs> transition. Hold on a second. Awful. Oh. Harry armpit and food. I can't, I can't that has to be the worst transition oh. ever. Hold on. Nobody's a second. gonna buy it now. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. We're gonna have to do a free commercial for butcher box. No, we're not. Listen, have you guys? Okay, I'm listening for real though because i'm grilling like crazy right now we're at home and i got all this food stored in the freezer have you guys tried the the sausage and the hot dogs that they serve no but they they're freaking i didn't even know they had that yeah they, i haven't had those yet they're really good what are you are you do you have like a variety pack that you yeah. get every time okay, because so I, you always bring he up he changes it up the most I yeah guess. i don't i have like a, a set what i've i know no, me too. go on butcher box every month and look at their specials and their add-ons and there's always something different. Well, huh. whether it be lobster yeah, you're tail, all, you're always trying the different stuff. They had sausage, and it was it's phenomenal. It's really really good. My kids loved it. It was really really good. But every month you go on there. This is what I love about them. One of the things I love about them is every single month you can go on there, and they'll have some kind of a special for 
some kind of an add-on. Uh, one time it was uh, it was a pulled pork. Mm -hmm. They had the pulled pork that I had you guys try. Other times a sausage. They had lobster tails they one had time. like a surf and turf one time we got for Courtney. Yeah, really and you just, you just add it to your box. It doesn't go automatic. So you have your normal box, right, that you pay whatever, 100 or 200 bucks a month for that's got your staples. Yeah. Like for me, it's tri-tip, uh, ribeye, chicken thighs, and pork chops. Yeah. And then, uh, so I, that's my staple. But then I'll go in every month and I'll do add-ons to see. Speaking of meat, did you see, um, I think Rob Wolf posted this. Did you guys hear that they're trying to do a tax on meat, a carbon oh, tax? God. On, uh, did you hear that? Stupid. Yeah, I mean, I saw on his him posting about it, but- uh, It was him. It was Rob Wolf. It was Rob Wolf. Okay. Oh, gosh. Tax it, meat. But that looked like hopeful thinking. Like, it didn't look like that was something that was oh, know, I, definitive. Oh, I thought I read that it was like, that's on Biden's plan to do that. Maybe I'm completely he, wrong. So yeah, fact check me, Doug, here. Like, I don't know. Uh, there's so much misinformation. It's like hard to believe. Carbon tax on on meat, Biden, I don't know, something like that. See what see what happens. Yeah, let's just make everybody less nutrient, you know. Yeah. Uh, less, less healthy. Yeah, stop eating. Yeah. You know, I was actually reading the comments. It was interesting how many people thought it was not a bad idea. You know what it is? If you... This is very smart by by government. If you want to charge a tax to raise more money, one of the ways you do it is... Oh, my you God. By 2050? We're talking about stuff that's going to go down in 2050? Yeah. Oh, yeah we <laughs> could face it. That's like a Gavin Newsom move right there. <laughs> yeah. 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 In 100 years, we yeah. will all be... Yeah. 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 Cancer will be cured by yeah. this new bill that we just passed. I wrote it into office. Yeah. Get out of here. Um, but no, uh, very smart move by government. If you ever want to raise taxes and not get everybody pissed off, you attach it to some kind of moral thing. So like, you know, meat's bad for the environment, so we're going to tax it. And you get a lot of people who support it and say, yes, this will help the environment. But the, the science actually shows that meat done grown properly and raised properly uh, is actually quite good. Well, so now let me, so let's speculate a little bit. Now, would you be pro that? If it was for like these, you know, overseas, uh, you know, like these uh, commercial, massive commercial farms that are, don't have the best practices are getting heavily taxed. But then if you do an all grass fed, all natural type of you farm. Tax incentives. Yeah, you, you, because, to, because your carbon emission is a, net, think, is a net zero. So you don't get taxed. Who like, do you think it's going to hurt the most? If yeah. you make food the consumer, more expensive. Of well, course. No, not just the consumer. What kind of consumer? Wealthy consumer? Or the consumers that are struggling to make their to, to, pay, right. to pay for their bills. That's a good point. You're not hurting the rich people who are. I'm buying grass fed meat. I'm going to Whole Foods and spending tons of money. I don't care. Yeah. But you're going to hurt the 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 single mom who's trying to make burgers for their kids, and that's the only unprocessed food that they have. Oh, now it's going to get taxed. Right. On top of it, mm, sorry yeah. kids, guess we're having that's Cheerios again for dinner, or you know potato chips or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's stupid. I don't. Mm. I, I'm definitely not supportive. No, it's interesting. First question is from Ryan McClellan, 0724. What is the best way to get a higher vertical jump? Jump shoes. Next one, Doug. <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys remember, remember those? those. Yeah. I, bro, I owned them. Did you? Oh, yeah. I Me and my brother did too. Oh, yeah. we, and my buddy we and tried I. tried them out. They, so these, I mean, were, these were shoes that essentially had a block under the, the front part of the foot. So it's like you're you're doing calf raises, right? Yeah. Walking around doing calf they raises. Were, they were a... A phenomenon for about ten years. I mean, everybody bought into them for. I want to say about ten years. What did you do? Put them on and just walk around? No. Okay. So yeah, you. Well, no, no. They had a, a program that went with it. Like uh, you were supposed to do sprints and little like hops, and you were supposed to train in them. And oh my god, did you get like unbelievably sore? Oh, right. Destroy oh, your. And ass. so that's what that's what made you think like these things it are has working. to be working. Yeah. So uh, it when my uh, when I was a uh, uh, let's see here Santa Teresa. So when I was managing Santa Teresa, so I'm I'm probably at this point 26 or so um and i i mean i bought those shoes back when i was 15 so i would say from 15 to then i had a trainer that was going to san jose state and was a kines major and he took he got me into the the department in there and we did like some uh body fat with the bod pod thing that they had there and mm -hmm. i got to meet like the professor and he uh he actually did a thesis on the jump shoes and completely debunked them. Mm. But it wasn't until like a decade after they had already like sold millions and millions of these things and everybody was sold on the idea that they worked. They absolutely yeah. do not they work. They had their run for sure. Oh, they did. Well, that was back then we thought that, that calves played such a huge role. They play a role, yeah. but they're not. Yeah. Oh, there's much more happening than just having strong yeah. calves. I mean, I would I would argue they almost. I mean, if, if you broke down the mechanics of a jump, I know there's somebody who's like, oh, yes, they do play a role. Yeah. It's oh, like, no. no, you. I mean, they play such a small role if you honestly the uh the time and effort spent on the calf to help the vertical if that exact same time is spent 
on your quads and 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 move the movement, you'll get way more bang for that, your buck. So that's okay. So here's a big one. A lot of people don't realize that jumping is, uh, there's a lot of technique involved. Oh, it's, yeah. it's a skill. So it's not just about power or or explosivity. Although those are important. Yeah. It's I, also a skill. And in fact, when you look at people who can jump really high. You start to notice a, a a common pattern in technique, so it's not just about power, strength, or explosivity. Although those do play a role, I would argue, especially watching a lot of the PJ performance videos and all these, like technique is is so much of a higher priority than I even realized. Besides getting your legs strong and and you know making sure your whole body moves and has a lot of control and can be explosive on command. Um, to be able to get the right step and to really have like you know an even bigger step to get to, to maximize that stretch reflex uh, to get you to catapult up like all these things matter all the little nuances matter uh, you know the way that you approach the hoop if you're trying to dunk and, and all these types of things so uh, you know I think that they just do a masterful job at uh, you know coaching people and teaching all these techniques hands down best information online is, is that and I, I so I found Paul, uh, I want to say, you know, five years ago when we were first getting into this and I was just getting on Instagram and because I like basketball sports, like he came up in my feed <clears throat> and back then I think he had maybe, maybe 10,000 followers or so. And, you know, right away, whenever I see coaches or trainers, I, I go through their feed to kind of see like what kind of content and, and information producing. And like right away was like this dude knows his shit and I have not found anybody else that's <clears throat> putting out this good of information and really there, there's this uh, this misconception of uh, because trainers that are working with professional athletes they must be like the, the best or the smartest because they're working with professional athletes but a lot of times in the, in the pro world it's all about who you know. Yeah, it's and a they network. Just, yeah, it's just a network of the right the right person. You know the right person to get in, and they're doing. It. And, and a lot of times, uh, they're kind of average trainers. They're not that great. The information they're presenting, and I knew this as, as as my experience went on and my education grew in in the space. Like I started to become aware more and more of this. Like, oh wow, like this that's not great to be training that trainer mm -hmm. that. Or I'd meet like a professional athlete, and he'd tell me the routine his trainer had to do. I'm like, what the hell is this? But when I met, saw Paul, I was like, this dude knows his stuff. When we were talking, uh, one of the things I asked him actually, to your point, Justin, was I was like, how much does technique make a difference in compared to like, you know, building your squat up? Because obviously learning to squat really well, the power to your point, Sal, does play a big role. But technique is such a big role. He's like, a lot of times, Adam, he goes, I can take somebody in the, in the same day add three to six inches to their vertical. Mm -hmm. That's Just, insane. Yeah, that is insane. That's the difference of a person dunking a basketball and not being able to dunk. Mm -hmm. That's like somebody who could barely touch the rim and yeah. all of a sudden leaves that day and can dunk a basketball. That's mind-blowing, and he's all... Just by picking apart their technique, the way mm -hmm. they they lead into the jump, the way they set into it, they go, and that's this is why it's it's weird for us sometimes when we look at some of these guys that have these these crazy verticals, they don't have the biggest calves all the time, they don't always have massive quads to to get them up there. It's not it's not always that. Some of them are just they have the technique down. It's so a skill. Well. It's like saying you know how to get how to get a harder punch. You could definitely get stronger, yeah, point. but yeah. learning how to punch better is going to be it's more a very effective. Good example. So skill is number one. So number one, focus on the skill and technique of jumping high. And then number two, build up overall strength. Squats being one of the best exercises. And here's where I would actually recommend a quarter squat or a half squat. This is where, you know, that's the range of motion that you really want to get stronger at to improve your vertical. Full squats are great. They're not going to actually contribute as much as a half squat or quarter squat. But if you're a beginner and you don't have good general strength, then I would go full squat. If you're already working out, if you already got good full squats, you just want to do an exercise that's more specific to a vertical, try some half squats. Well, and, squats. and this is what, uh, there was a lot of controversy, I think a year or two ago. Oh, when, with LeBron James. Yeah, when LeBron squats. James squat went viral. And we, I must have been tagged a hundred times mm -hmm. on that. Um, and everybody like, look at how, t look at this pro athlete. He's terrible. It's actually, this is where it applies. Yeah. LeBron James doesn't give a shit if his quads are two inches bigger than the next guy. LeBron James isn't caring about you know having great hip health when he's 60 years old. All he gives a shit about is can I improve my vertical? Where do I generate the most force that's you know going to be applicable to my sport? Right, you know, and that's that you know, and that's where the quarter squat kind of comes in. Like that's where you want to be able to have like the maximal amount of force to deal with, so I can transfer that to my feet to then catapult me up towards the rim. So I've I've announced this on my uh, Instagram stories many times. So if you haven't uh, heard me plug these guys, you absolutely should. If you're interested in in basketball, vertical jump, and and training, uh, and even 
even like technique and moves like uh, PJF performance. Uh, our buddy Paul Fabritz is, I think, the best in the industry. Uh, Max Marzo, who's a good friend and partner of his, Max also is awesome. Uh, and then um, Corey, Corey's. What's what's Corey's page? Yeah. Sh- what is it? Uh, Sless uh, strength or yeah, yeah Schlesinger strength. Yeah. Schlesinger strength. And all three of them, all, they all know each other. They come from a, a, a similar circle uh, of people that I think are are. Those leading. are all my favorite strength conditioning coaches out there for sports. Yeah, they're in leading, general. They're leading the way for sure. Next question is from Coach Hickman Lifts. Favorite old school lifts that don't see love anymore? You know what's funny is we're seeing more old school lifts being done today than we did uh, before. I mean, when I was in gyms, I never saw – I mean, heck, we didn't see deadlifts or barbell squats, uh, let alone, you know, uh, zercher squats or good mornings. What what do you attribute it to? Uh, mind pump. I think we started talking about. <laughs> it's definitely us. No, I don't know. I think it's the. I think it was uh, social media. A lot of good trainers and coaches coming out and talking about the bed. Like Good Mornings, for example. Never saw them. Um, and I love that exercise done properly. It's a great hamstring exercise. So I'm going to pick an exercise that it's it's old school that you still today don't see a lot of. Um, I love the one arm uh, push press with the dumbbell or one arm clean press with the dumbbell. This was. An old strongman lift. Some people call like it a circus a, press. Like similar to a circus oh, I press. Love, I love that. I love it. I love doing heavy singles with it. So I'll take a heavy dumbbell. I'll clean it to my shoulder. Uh, opposite arm is kind of out for balance, and I'll pop it up and then drop it down on the ground. So I'll make sure I have some a nice mat or something I could drop the dumbbell, um, and then I'll rest and I'll do it again. Great exercise for shoulder strength, uh, upper back. And then here's another one. We've talked about this one a lot. It's in a lot of our programs. Still don't see it uh, quite. I don't see it anywhere still. Um, windmills. Uh, windmills are great exercise for your your the side of your body, your QL, spinal health. If you have issues with your deadlifts where your back starts to get a little sore or hips, yeah, wind, get good at windmills and that makes a big it difference. It just bulletproofs you know, your, your spine and helps to support you in any kind of rotation. And I think it's important to really visit that and, and make that you know, a priority in your programming. Uh, I also, well, you know, what's interesting about this too is uh, I just, every now and then I'll kind of do some moves with the Indian clubs and, you know, I, I expect already that I'm going to get some jokes about like air traffic control and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, there's been a lot of interest um, and, and I get like DMs constantly about it. And I've seen other pages and people popping up uh, where there's this like real interest in, in that style of training and also in like Persian meals and then also like May spells and gadas and things like that. They're very much unconventional, but they're like ancient, you know, like people are using them for a long period of mm-hmm. time and they have value. And so it's, I, I don't know, man, it's exciting to see, but also it's definitely underground mm-hmm. still. I'm going to pick one that uh, Sal actually introduced to me and it, it's completely changed uh how i train like so i used to love or do a lot of leg extensions and i have not done a leg extension in i don't know how many years now uh ever since uh, you got me doing sissy squats um i think sissy squats are one of like the one of the golden forgotten movements that you still never see mm-hmm. you're right i always get like a bunch of people are hard yeah and they're just they look weird right mm-hmm. if you don't know what the person's doing it looks like oh my god their knees are traveling way over their toes he's on his tippy toes what the hell is this guy doing it just looks weird if you have no idea what it's doing what you're doing but the the movement uh i think it should, not only is it uh i feel it 10 times more uh, in my quads when I do that uh, over a leg extension. It also promotes good hip extension. Mm-hmm. And I just think when I when I think of a majority of my clients that I, I was always talking to them about hip extension and why this is such an important movement for you. And you have to ha- you have to be able to engage that really well and do that movement. So it's a little more technical, but like anything else that's a little more technical, it comes with more benefits. And yeah, so lots of value. Oh, I just and, and you don't need anything. Mm-hmm. You could just you could just grab something to hold on to anywhere in your house and get this massive quad pump with just your body weight. Mm-hmm. And then heaven, if you get really good at it, you know, holding a twenty five pound plate. And I never really have to do that. I mean, it just just my body just weight. Just your slow. body squeeze. Oh yeah, and it promotes good. good ankle mobility. It's got you get good hip extension in it, and then just the massive pump. sissy squats. I think are. For sure, a forgotten movement that I think belongs in a lot of people's routines, and I still 
I've never, I've actually never seen anybody else do it in the gym. That's yeah. still an exercise that mm -hmm. I never see anybody else. Well, they do. had that sissy squat machine or apparatus, not the same. And nobody used uh, to use that. Yeah, either. and nobody used it, but it's still, it's not even the same. The mm -hmm. actual free body sissy squat is uh, superior. Another exercise that's good that I've never really trained myself, but I see what's involved in in doing it, and I can see the value in it. And Justin, you're really good at doing this, is the bent press, mm -hmm. the side bent press. Yeah, I love that. This was how strong men back in the day would would do these exhibitions where they would lift ungodly amounts of weight with one arm above their head. I think Eugene Sandow did, uh, I don't know, almost 300 pounds mm -hmm. with this bent press. And it's very, very technical, and it requires tremendous oblique spinal stability, uh, uh, QL, quadratus stability, and then, of course, shoulder mobility to do. Well, you it's combining two of the moves that you picked, yeah. right? The windmill the and the circus press. Yep. It's very, very similar to those two. You, you get the benefits of both those, right? Mm -hmm. So if you yeah. can, if you like the windmill, the circus press, the uh, to me, that's the progression is to do mm -hmm. a bent press. Yeah, you got to be a master of distributing that force throughout your body and not having it stop at those compromising joints like your shoulder joint and, you know, like it, it's very much of a technical move, but once you get the technique down, it opens you up for lots of other strength mm -hmm. And then here's a movement. It's a bodybuilder, old school bodybuilder movement. I don't really never see anybody do a uh, reverse curl on with a curl bar. You love that one. Um, I, you know what? I tell you what, do reverse curls and then watch the, the comments you get on your arms. Get good at them. It really does develop the top of your forearms and the thickness in your bicep, and it gives you nice-looking, relaxed arms. You know, you're walking around in a T-shirt. Uh, you can tell when you, when you do that exercise. Next question is from NAD7719. Is it true Nads. that the calf muscle is mostly determined by genetics and is not as trainable as other muscles in terms of increasing size? <laughs> Half that's true. You know what's funny about that one? So I, I think about this sometimes with calves, and I'm going to be very honest, okay, because I talk about, oh, my calves don't respond like the rest of my body. Here's the truth. Of all the body parts that I've trained in myself, I've trained my calves the least, straight up, 100%. I'm the most consistent with other body parts of my body and my calves. I've always, if I've neglected anything, it's my, and I believe this to be true for most people or more, especially most men who work out in the gym. So it's hard to say. Now there's the argument for genetics because we walk around a lot. So the calves are used to at least doing something. So they may require more volume and work. Maybe they're, they're comprised of more slow twitch muscle fibers for stamina and endurance. I've definitely known people to have big calves and I've known other people who train their calves like crazy and, and get little development. Um, but it's hard to say because I don't know very many people that train their calves as consistently as they train their biceps. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's usually not the muscle you start training when you start working out. Yeah, but so here's where I agree with you. Uh, it's it's neglected as many, and, and it's a muscle. It can be developed. So and uh, and I when I was getting into competing, like the I never put the the effort towards training my calves like I did then, and mm. I a lot. I put obviously I'm on stage in my shorts, even though they don't they don't. Uh, uh, um, judge a lot of your calves, they, they still see them. So if they, if you're up there and you have this impressive upper body and you have no calves whatsoever, you'll get dock points. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're just, you, if that, if it comes down to that, that will make the difference, right? Me and another guy who look exactly the same at top, but then I have no calves, I'm going to get docked. So it was 100% of focus for me. And it was already a weak point going in. So uh, I trained calves like I'd never trained any other muscle. It, it began, it became a, a muscle that I started most all workouts with. It had its own dedicated day, mm -hmm. and I did was doing blood occlusion. Like the amount of volume that I scaled up was insane. I I scaled up the volume on my calves more than anything I ever done, and I got results. Like my calves, I get to a point where I mean I, I've joked on the show if you've listened long enough. You know, the, the day I got compliments, started getting compliments on it, it was like <laughs> such a big deal for me, right? Like, oh my God, somebody Start noticed, crying. right? But here's the thing. Here's <laughs> why this feels true for a lot of people. And this is where I understand. Because genetics do play a huge role, okay? So like if it's in, you know, where the origin insertion, if you have these short little muscle bellies and these really high calves, like a lot of basketball players, um, it's not going to look as big as like someone like Justin who has a longer or well, in terms of the look. Yeah. Right. So it's not going to look the same, just like a butt, like some, some girls naturally and guys have a natural bubble butt and they don't do anything. They just have this nice little bubble. Butt. Other people have like a, a flat butt, which is this long origin insertion. Mm. And, but both those butts can be developed. 
Okay, the reason why I think the calves feel this way because unlike the butt, which is a massive muscle, the calf is such a small muscle. Mm -hmm. It's one of the. It's like forearms, where you could sit here and talk all day about putting all this attention in your forearms, and you can develop them, but they're never going to feel impressive like a chest or a back or quads. They're just a small muscle. So I think part of it is true what you're saying that. Most people, it's because they we just like the attention. That 100% was me. As a teenage boy, you know, we we did it for basketball a little bit. I did them occasionally, but I neglected them more than anything else. As an adult, I definitely put a lot of energy and effort to them, saw results from it, but still were never really that impressive. And I think a lot of that has to do with they're a much smaller muscle. Yeah, yeah I definitely think yeah, genetics are part of it. Also, though, like, you, you know, expressing that, though, is really important. Like, for me... So think it's not like I didn't put any effort there. Like there was a lot of frequency. There's a lot of jumping. There's a lot of jump rope. There was a lot of like driving the sled. There was a lot of positions, you know, being a linebacker where you can't you can't put your heels on the ground ever. I was trained to do that. And I was also trained to to do front squats and stuff with my heels raised because back then it, you know, it applied towards the sport. But uh there was a lot of, of frequency and there was a lot of volume, uh, you know, for me over a, a huge span of time. So this is is like you know at least over a decade of just like sports in general where I'm just like constantly sprinting I'm driving things and I'm always on the balls of my feet that was like definitely something stressed a lot uh, from coaches when I was in technique of different positions where I never like really had my heels down flat and so this to to also like go back to like the deadlift thing was so difficult of a transition for me like being like super grounded and like grounding in my uh, you know my heels because that was just mm. like foreign to me Next question is from Hal Dunksty. Why do female CrossFitters usually have thicker waists? It's for the opposite reason that you think. Yes. So people think they have a thicker waist because they do CrossFit. It's they do CrossFit because they have thicker waist. Well, they're good at CrossFit. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. So yeah. it's it's the opposite of what you would think. You would think like, oh my God, I look at all these CrossFitters. There, there's a bias, right? You get your looking at people that gravitate towards a sport because they're naturally good at yeah. it. If you have a good solid base, good, strong obliques, you're going to be better at, at crossing. Yeah, you have to be careful with these types of assessments. Like mm. you could look at uh, Olympic swimmers. So watch the Olympics and you're right. looking at the best swimmers in the world. And you may say to yourself, wow, swimming makes your chest uh, shallow, makes your wide, give you a wide back and long arms and short legs. So if I swim a lot, that's mm. what I'm going to look like. No, that's not true. It's just that they their genetics – gave them a amazing body for swimming, and then they trained on top of it, um, and that's what made them uh, such high level. When you're looking at the female CrossFit champions, yes, they've developed their body through training. Yes, they've developed the muscles around the waist as well, obliques and, and their abs and their core, very, very strong, but they probably also naturally have thicker, stronger waists, and that's what gives them more of that stability. A super small, tiny waist and by the way, having muscular defined obliques and abs looks really good. It shows that you have good stability and strength. It doesn't look bad, but sometimes we have these ideals, right? We look at models or whatever, and they're supposed to have these like impossibly tiny waists. Mm -hmm. In in sports or in movement, that's a detriment. You have a tiny little wispy waist, yeah. and you're going to go and you're do- You're susceptible for injury. Oh, you're going to hurt your spine. You're not going to deadlift much. You can't overhead press much. You can't twist very well, so- um, it's a bit of a detriment. So that's actually what you're seeing. What you're seeing is a bias towards people who compete at a high level. And then on top of it, they also develop their bodies through lots of training. They probably have tremendous muscle building genetics. So they don't just have thick muscular waist. They have thick muscular backs and shoulders and quads and hamstrings and glutes and all that stuff uh, because they're at the top level. Now, if you take the average person and they ate right and you train them to compete in CrossFit, they're just going to get fit. They're going to get really fit. They're not going to get big waist. They're going to get leaner, um, and you'll see more definition. But it's not due to the training. This reminds me of the myth like, you know, deadlifts and squats makes your waist big, so don't do not do them. I mean, it's silly. It's all, Really, if you want your waist to be small, just get lean. Uh, body fat takes up so much more space. You could drop inches off your waist by getting lean, and then you could build the shit out of your core, and you might gain a quarter of an inch around your waist. So you lost five inches from fat and you gained a quarter of an inch of muscle. Uh, sounds like an amazing trade-off, uh, if you ask me. Plus, it's more defined uh, and you're, you're, you look a lot better and you're healthier. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. 
You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find me at Mind Pump Sal. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug, the producer, at Mind Pump Doug. I listened to a podcast with Arthur Brooks on on uh, talk people who talk politics and worry about and he's and this, they've done studies on this and they show that people who talk a lot of politics generally no one likes them, including people who agree with their politics. <laughs> I love that. You're stat. an annoying you're yes. an annoying person. It's, it's 100%. So even if people agree with you, people don't want to hang out with you because.